Cordelia is a genus of 200-300 species of tropical plants in the dog bane family, Apocynaceae. Most are native to several countries of Asia such as Philippines, India, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Polynesia, New Guinea, and vast variety of species could also be found in Australia. Common names for this genus are wax plant, wax vine, wax flower or simply hoya. This genus was named by botanist Robert Brown, in honor of his friend, botanist Thomas Hoy. Hoyas are evergreen perennial creepers or vines or early shrubs. They often grow epiphytically on trees, some grow terrestrially, or occasionally in rocky areas. They climb by twining, and with the employment of adventitious roots. Larger species grow 1-18 meters, 3-59 feet, or more, with suitable support in trees. They have simple entire leaves, arranged in an opposite pattern, that are typically succulent. Leaves may exhibit a variety of forms, and may be smooth, felted or hairy, venation may be prominent or not, and many species have leaf surfaces flecked with irregular small silvery spots. The flowers appear in axillary umbilate clusters at the tip of peduncles. Hoya peduncles are commonly referred to as spurs. In most species these spurs are perennial and are rarely shed. Each flowering cycle increases the length of the spur, and in the larger species can eventually reach 27 cm, 11 in, or more. Flowers vary in size from 3 mm, 0.1 in Hoya bilabida schltr, to over 95 mm, foreign, in H. lauderbachi i.k. Schumann, in diameter. Flower form is typically star-shaped, with five thick, waxy, triangular petals, topped with another star-shaped structure, the corona. Colors on most species range from white to pink. There are species that exhibit yellow to orange, dark reds to near black, and there are green flowers. Many are sweetly scented and most produce abundant nectar. Pollinators include moths, flies, and ants. Pollination is poorly understood, but plants left outdoors in temperate regions do sometimes produce seed, indicating pollination by local insects. Seeds are born in twin pods, actually follicles, are generally light, and are dispersed by the wind by means of a small tuft of silky fluff. Germination is rapid, but viability is not long. At least some species exhibit chrysulus and acid metabolism, CAM, including H. carnosa. Several species exhibit adaptations for mutualism with ants by providing modified leaves for Dimatia. Holmes, much as in the related genus Dyschidia, H. imbricata has leaves that form a concave cup over the tree trunk it climbs up to shelter ants. And H. darwinii has arrangements of bullet leaves on its stems to form shelters. Leaves. Hoya leaves vary in size, texture, color and venation. In size, leaves range from as small as 5 mm in length and 2 to 4 mm in width Hoya in Gleriana hosius, to as large as 25 cm by 35 cm Hoya latifolia g. Don. Hoya coriacea bloom, has been reported to have leaves as long as 2 feet in length. There are Hoyas with almost perfectly round leaves and others with linear leaves Hoya linearis wall x. D. Don and Hoya teratifolia griff x hook f. One popular species, Hoya shifferdii short x hook has leaves that resemble string beans hanging in bunches from their stalks. Hoya linearis wall x D. Don is covered with fine downy hair and resembles masses of Spanish moss Tillandsia sneaides hanging from trees in its native habitat. Some Hoya leaves appear to be veinless while others have very conspicuous veins of a lighter or darker color than the rest of the leaves as in H. cinnamomifolia. Some have leaves that are mottled with speckles of silvery white Hoya carnosa rbr, Hoya pubicolix. Some Hoyas have leaves that are thin and translucent Hoya coriacea bloom. Some are so thick and succulent that they look more like Chrysulus than Hoyas Hoya australis ssp rupicola, oramicola and sani from Australia and Hoya pachiclita from Thailand. One of the most succulent, Hoya cari i crabe, has obcordate inverse heart-shaped leaves, with the cleft away from the stem. Flowers. Hoya mandurensis. Hoya flowers are all shaped like five-pointed stars. Some species' petals reflect so far that the flowers appear to be round or ball-like. They grow in umbels, or in some species singly. Umbels can reach impressive proportions in some species, and many species have individual flowers well over three inches in diameter. H. imperially lin, H. lauderbachi i.k. Schumann. H. coriacea bloom has been known to have as many as 70 in an inflorescence each individual measuring nearly 2 cm in diameter with the umbels over 30 cm in breadth. The single-flowered Hoya posiflora white makes up for its paucity by its flower size of nearly an inch and a half in diameter produced at any time of year. Textures of flower surfaces may be glabrous and shiny, to matte, to finely haired, 
and some being quite hairy. One of the two clones of Hoya Mindorensis SCHLTR, from the Philippines, comes very close to being a true red, blue, purples, and violets do not appear to be represented in the genus Hoya. Many species of Hoya are popular houseplants in temperate areas especially H. carnosa, grown for their attractive foliage and strongly scented flowers. Numerous cultivars have been selected for different leaf forms or flower colors. Hoyas grow well indoors, preferring bright light, but will tolerate fairly low light levels, although they may not flower without bright light. Hoyas commonly sold in nurseries as houseplants include cultivars of H. carnosa, crimson queen, Hindu rope, compacta, H. pubicolix, often mislabeled as H. carnosa or H. purpurea fusca, and H. cariae. Hoyas are easy to propagate and are commonly sold as cuttings, either rooted or unrooted, or as a potted plant. Hoya carnosa has been shown in recent studies at the University of Georgia to be an excellent remover of pollutants in the indoor environment. Various cultures have used hoyas medicinally, especially Polynesian cultures. Some are toxic to livestock and sheep poisonings in Australia are reported. Several hoya species and cultivars are excellent terrarium plants. Hoya campanulata. Hoya cinnamomifolia. Hoya imperially. Hoya parasitica. Hoya potsiae. Curia raulianus, sin. Senecia raulianus, is a flowering plant in the daisy family Asteraceae. It is a creeping, perennial, succulent vine native to the drier parts of southwest Africa. In its natural environment its stems trail on the ground, rooting where they touch and forming dense mats. It often avoids direct sunlight by growing in the shade of other plants and rocks. It is commonly known as string of pearls or string of beads. String of beads and several other common names are shared with Curio hirinus string of watermelons, which has teardrop-shaped leaves, rather than spherical. This plant was named after British botanist Gordon Douglas Rowley who specialized in cactaceae and succulents. According to NCBI, Senecia raulianus is a synonym of Curio raulianus. However, IPNI and the Catalog of Life 2000 maintain S. raulianus as an accepted name. Curio raulianus receives its common name from specialized leaves which are the size and shape of small peas. About 14 inch diameter its trailing stems can grow to 3 feet, 60-90 centimeters. There is a small tip at the distal point of each leaf and a thin band of dark green tissue on the side known as a window, see below. It blooms during the summer and, like all asterids, it has a compound flower. The trumpet-shaped flower forms clusters, about 12 inch diameter, of small white flowers with colorful stamens. The flower will last about a month and is said to smell like cinnamon and other spices. Leaf morphology. The odd shape of the leaves is an adaptation to arid environments and allows for the storage of water while exposing a minimum amount of surface area per volume to the dry desert air. This greatly reduces water loss due to evaporation relative to the typical dorsi ventrally flattened leaves of most angiosperms. Although its spherical leaf morphology contributes to minimizing water loss, it also dramatically reduces the area available for the absorption of light and could be potentially detrimental to the plant's rate of photosynthetic carbon assimilation. An adaptation that may help compensate for this reduction in light interception is a narrow, translucent, crescent-shaped band of tissue on the adaxial side of the lamina. This specialized structure is known as an epidermal window and it allows light to enter and irradiate the interior of the leaf, effectively increasing the area of leaf tissue available for photosynthesis. This is a trait shared with Curio radicans, string of bananas, a close relative of Curio raulianus. A similar morphology is observed in species of the genus Fenestraria as well as the species Haworthia cuperi and Frithia pulchra, which grow underground and only expose their leaf tips to absorb light radiation. Curia raulianus is commonly cultivated as an ornamental plant. It is typically displayed in hanging baskets with the leaves cascading over the edge of the container. It can be grown indoors or outdoors above freezing temperature and is considered to be low maintenance. Like most succulents, it requires very infrequent watering about once a month, a few hours of direct sunlight and is not affected by humidity. Good soil drainage is essential to prevent root rot, so sandy soil is recommended. This plant can be propagated easily by cutting or pinching off 4 inches of healthy stem tip and lightly covering them with moist potting mix. The roots will quickly develop from where the leaves are attached to the stem. The vegetation of C. raulianus is somewhat poisonous and should not be consumed. In humans the string of pearls plant is rated as toxicity classes 2 and 4 by the University of California, Davis. Class 2 is defined by minor toxicity, ingestion of string of pearls may cause minor illnesses such as vomiting or diarrhea. Class 4 is defined by dermatitis, 
contact with a plant sap may cause skin irritation or ash. Likewise, if consumed by animals it can cause vomiting, diarrhea, drooling, skin irritation or lethargy. Coffea is a genus of flowering plants in the family Rubiaceae. Coffea species are shrubs or small trees native to tropical and southern Africa and tropical Asia. The seeds of some species, called coffee beans, are used to flavor various beverages and products. The fruits, like the seeds, contain a large amount of caffeine and have a distinct sweet taste and are often juiced. The plant ranks as one of the world's most valuable and widely traded commodity crops and is an important export product of several countries, including those in Central and South America, the Caribbean and Africa. There are over 120 species of coffea, which is grown from seed. The two most popular are coffea arabica commonly known simply as arabica, which accounts for 60-80% of the world's coffee production, and coffea canifora, known as robusta, which accounts for about 20-40%. See arabica is preferred for its sweeter taste, while C. canifora has a higher caffeine content. C. arabica has its origins in the highlands of Ethiopia and the Boma Plateau of Sudan and was the result of a hybrid between C. canifora and C. eugenioides. The trees produce edible red or purple fruits, which are described either as epigenous berries or as indehiscent droops. The fruit is often referred to as a coffee cherry, and it contains two seeds, called coffee beans. Despite these terms, coffee is neither a true cherry, the fruit of certain species in the genus Prunus, nor a true bean. Seeds from plants in the family Fabaceae. In about 5-10% of any crop of coffee fruits, only a single bean is found. Called a peaberry, it is smaller and rounder than a normal coffee bean. When grown in the tropics, coffee is a vigorous bush or small tree that usually grows to a height of 3-3.5 meters, 9.8 to 11.5 feet. Most commonly cultivated coffee species grow best at high elevations, but do not tolerate freezing temperatures. The tree of coffee arabica will grow fruits after 3-5 to five years, producing for an average of 50-60 to 60 years, although up to 100 is possible. The white flowers are highly scented. The fruit takes about nine months to ripen. The caffeine in coffee beans serves as a toxic substance protecting the seeds of the plant, a form of natural plant defense against herbivory. Caffeine simultaneously attracts pollinators, specifically honeybees, by creating an olfactory memory that signals bees to return to the plant's flowers. Not all coffee species contain caffeine, and the earliest species had little or no caffeine content. Caffeine has evolved independently in multiple lineages of coffee in Africa, perhaps in response to high pest predation in the humid environments of West Central Africa. Caffeine has also evolved independently in the more distantly related genera Theobroma cacao and Camellia tea. This suggests that caffeine production is an adaptive trait in coffee and plant evolution. The fruit and leaves also contain caffeine, and can be used to make coffee cherry tea and coffee leaf tea. The fruit is also used in many brands of soft drink as well as prepackaged teas. Several insect pests affect coffee production, including the coffee borer beetle, Hypothenemus hampi, and the coffee leaf miner, Leucoptera caffeina. Coffee is used as a food plant by the larvae of some Lepidoptera butterfly and moth species, Dalsera grassa, Turnip moth, and some members of the genus Endoclita, including Edamer and E. malabaricus. New species of coffee are still being identified in the 2000s. In 2008 and 2009, researchers from the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q named seven from the mountains of northern Madagascar, including C. ambangensis, C. boinensis, C. labadii, C. terracarpa, C. basishi, and C. namorakensis. In 2008, two new species were discovered in Cameroon. Coffea chiriariana, which is caffeine-free, and Coffea anthonii. By crossing the new species with other known coffees, Two new features might be introduced to cultivated coffee plants, beans without caffeine and self-pollination. In 2011, coffee absorbed the 20 species of the former genus Silanthus due to the morphological and genetic similarities between the two genera. Historically, the two have been considered distinct genera due to differences in the length of the Corolla tube and the anther arrangement. Coffee with a short Corolla tube and exerted style and anthers. Silanthus with a long Corolla tube and included anthers. However, these characteristics were not present in all species of either respective genus, making the two genera overwhelmingly similar in both morphology and genetic sequence. This transfer expanded coffee from 104 species to 124, and extended its native distribution to tropical Asia and Australasia. In 2014, the coffee genome was published, with more than 25,000 genes identified. 
This revealed that coffee plants make caffeine using a different set of genes from those found in tea, cacao and other such plants. In 2017, a robust and almost fully resolved phylogeny of the entire genus was published. In addition to resolving the relationships of coffee species, this study's results suggest Africa or Asia is the likely ancestral origin of coffee and point to several independent radiations across Africa, Asia, and the western Indian Ocean Islands.